How do you create a strong magnetic field? Yeah. So with a giant magnet. Giant magnet. Yeah. <laughs> so it's is basically true. Engineering is there's awesome. essentially there's essentially two ways to create a, a magnet. So one of them is that we're familiar with like fridge magnets and so forth. These are so-called permanent magnets. And what it means is that within these, the atoms arrange in a particular way that it produces, the electrons basically arrange in a particular way that it produces a permanent magnetic field that is set by the material. So those tend, those have a fundamental limitation how strong they can be, and they also tend to have this like circular shape like this. So we don't use, we don't typically use those. So what we use are so-called electromagnets. Mm -hmm. And what is this? It's like, um, so the other way to make a magnetic field, also go back to your, you know, your, your, your elementary school physics uh, or science class is that you take a, a, a nail and you wrap a copper wire around it and connect it to a battery, then it can pick up iron filings. This is an electromagnet. Mm -hmm. At its simplest, what it is, it's an electric current, which is going in a, in a pattern around and around and around. And what this does is it produces a magnetic field, which goes through it by the laws of electromagnetism. So that's what an electric. That's how, so that's how we make the magnetic field in these in, in these configurations, and the key there is that you it's not limited by the magnetic property of the material. The magnetic field uh, amplitude is set by the amount of the the geometry of this thing and the amount of electric current that you're putting through, and the more electric electric current that you put through, the more magnetic field that you get. The closest one that people maybe see is uh, <laughs> one of my <laughs> one of my favorite skits actually was super dave osborne on it's probably it's probably past you it was like in a show called bizarre super dave osborne which is a great comedian called he was a stunt man and one of his tricks was that he was he gets into a car and then one of those things in the junkyard comes down you know and picks up the car and then puts it into the into the crusher mm -hmm. this is his stunt which is a pretty hilarious anyway um but that thing that picks him up like, how does that work? That's actually not a permanent magnet. It's, a, it's an electromagnet. Mm -hmm. And so you can turn, by turning off and on the power supply, it turns off and on the magnetic field. So this means you can pick it up, and then when you switch it off, the magnetic field goes away and the car drops. Okay, so that's, that's what it looks like. Speaking of giant magnets, MIT and Commonwealth Fusion Systems, CFS, yeah. built a very large, high-temperature, superconducting electromagnet that was ramped up to a field strength of 20 Tesla, the most powerful magnetic field of its kind ever created on Earth. Um, because I enjoy this kind of thing. Can you please tell me about this magnet? Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, it was, it's fun, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot to parse there. So maybe, uh, we. so we already explained an electromagnet, which in general is what you do is you take electric current and you force it to, to, to follow a pattern of some kind, typically like a circular pattern, around and around and around and around. It goes, and the more time, the more current and the more times it goes around, the stronger the magnetic field that you make. Okay. And as I pointed out, it's like really important in magnetic confinement because it is the, the force that's produced by that magnet. In fact, technically it goes like the magnetic field squared because it, it's a pressure which is actually being exerted on the plasma to keep it contained uh just just so we know for magnetic confinement what is usually the geometry of the magnet what are we what the are we geometry to imagine? Right, yeah so the geometry is typically that typically is what you do is you want to produce a magnetic field that loops back on itself mm -hmm. and the reason for this was goes down to the nature of the force that i described which is that there's no there's no containment or force along the direction of the magnetic field. Right. So here's a magnetic field. In fact, what it, what it's more technically or more graphically what it's doing is that when the when the plasma is here, here's plasma particles here. Here's a magnetic field. What it does is it forces all those because of this the, this Lorentz force. It makes all of those charged particles execute circular orbits around the magnetic field, mm -hmm. and they go around like this. But they stream freely along the magnetic field line. So this is why the nature of the containment is that if you can get that circle smaller and smaller, it stays further away from Earth mm -hmm. temperature materials. That's why the confinement gets better. But the problem is, is that because it free streams along, so if we just have a long straight magnetic field, okay, it'll just keep leaking out the ends like really fast. So you get rid of the ends. So you basically loop it back around. 
So what these look like are typically donut shaped or t more technically toroidal shaped, but d donut shaped um, things where this collection of magnetic fields loops back on itself. And it also, for reasons which are more complicated to explain, basically it also twists that also twists slowly around in this direction as well too. So that's what it looks like. That's what the plasma looks like because that's what the fuel looks like. So then this means is that the um, the electromagnets are configured in such a way that it produces the desired mag magnetic fields so around this. So they, how precise does this have to be? You were probably listening to our conversation with some of my colleagues yesterday. Mm -hmm. So it's actually it's it depends on the configuration uh, about how you're doing it. The configuration and the, of the plasma. The sorry. configuration of the electromagnets and about how you're achieving this this requirement. Um, it, it, it's it's fairly precise, but it doesn't have to be in uh, particularly in something like a tokamak. What we do is we produce planar coils, which just mean they're flat. Mm -hmm. um, and we situate them. So if you think of a circle like this, what does it produce? If you put current through it, it, it produces a magnetic field, which goes through the circle like this. So if you align many of them like this, 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 there's things online. You can go see the picture. Duh, duh, duh. You keep arranging these around in a circle itself. Mm -hmm. This forces the magnetic field lines to basically just keep executing around like this. So you tend to align... That one tends to, re well, it requires in, in, good confine or good alignment. It's not like in, insane alignment because you're you're actually exploiting the symmetry of the situation to to help it. There's another kind of configuration of magnetic of this kind of magnetic confinement called a stellarator, which is we have these names for, for historic reasons, which is um, different than a tokamak. It's different than a tokamak, but actually works on the same physical principle. That namely, in the end, it produces a plasma which loops in magnetic fields, which loop back on themselves. Eh, well, but in that in that case, the totality basically the totality of the confining magnetic field is produced by external three dimensional magnets, so they're twisted. Um, and it turns out the precision of those is 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 more stringent 